And finally, the last piece of advanced querying we're going to look at is projections. So projections work in conjunction with our database queries. So what projections do are they apply the fields that we query for in our GraphQL query directly to our database table. So in our awesome application, let's go ahead and add projections to our courses query. So similar to filtering and sorting, we're going to start off by heading up to the startup.cs and we have add filtering, we have add sorting. Now we're going to add, you guessed it, projections. And this will just register all of the services to support projections. So back to our courses query, now we just need to use projections. So I mentioned previously that order does matter for all of these use attributes. So projections need to come after paging. So we're going to add use projections here or just use projection. And yes, that is all we have to do. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm logging SQL. So we'll be able to see how these projections are being applied to our database query. So here we have our paginated courses query. I'm going to get rid of all of my filtering and sorting and all that. Just make this a simple query and let's remove the pagination data. Wouldn't really need that back. So for this query, we're querying for ID, name, subject, all the instructor fields and all the students fields. And actually we get an error. So I feel like this is related to us trying to query on this relational data. So let me get rid of that real quick and let's see if this cleans this up. And yeah, it does. So we're going to have to handle our projections with the relational data. So all we did here was query for these fields that are actually on our course object. The other fields we were querying for were on nested relational data. We'll come back to that, but we've made this query for these three fields. Let's see how that looked in our database. And here we go. We can see it right here. So we selected the ID, the name and the subject. We didn't select all of the columns, just the ones that we needed. So let's get rid of about subject and ID. So just querying for name. And there we go. We get our data back and our query shows that we only queried for name. So we weren't fetching all the columns because we didn't need them. But now we have to figure out our issue with trying to query for this nested data. So let's bring back instructor and let's get their first name and query that. And we should see that error. And OK, here is the issue. So. When we're trying to resolve our instructor, we use the instructor ID from our course type. But the issue is that our instructor ID is null. And the reason it's null is because we didn't select it in our query. So when we made our database query, we didn't get the instructor ID back because we only asked for the name in our query. So if we continue this, we're going to get the error. But let me query for instructor ID now. And let's put a breakpoint here and see how this goes. So make that request. And now we have the instructor ID back because we queried for it. So it was included in our database query. And that's good because we need it. So let's continue here. We shouldn't get any errors. Looks good. And we get uh, we didn't get our data back. Let me continue this. And there we go. We get the data back because we actually had the instructor ID. So what we need to do is we need our instructor ID to pretty much always come back and luckily there is a way to do that in hot chocolate so what we can do is we can add this is projected attribute and set that to true and this will just make sure that we always query for our instructor id so let's put a breakpoint here and run this again and let's not include our instructor id so get rid of that which previously was a problem because we were trying to use it to get the instructor's first name in our resolver but now, as you can see, we have our instructor ID here. So we included it, even though we didn't query for it. And we get our data back successfully. And I guess for that example, I showed off how you can always project a field, but you can also specify to never project a field. Or in other words, just ignore a field. So let's say name, let's make that false. So we're not projecting. So that means even if we query for the name in our GraphQL query, it's not going to get projected to our database query, which means our name is just going to be null. So let's see that this definitely isn't a good use case where you'd want to use is projected as false. But as you can see, the name is null because we queried for it here, but we're not projecting this field to our database query. I guess the use case where you wouldn't want to project a field is if you were getting the data from somewhere that 
wasn't the database. So in that case, you wouldn't need it projected to the database query. But overall projections just prevent your application from ever fetching database columns, which probably wouldn't be an issue in our application because we don't have that many columns on our objects and all of our columns are pretty small. But if you had a massive database table or you had one column that's like a gigantic blob of data for some reason, then projections would definitely be useful. And then just summarizing what we did, so we added projections to our GraphQL server registration. And then for our paginated courses query, we use projections. And again, ordering does matter, so it has to come after use paging and before filtering and sorting. And that was pretty much it, except for our course type, we made sure that we always queried for the instructor ID because we needed that in our instructor resolver. So hopefully you can apply projections to your own GraphQL server with hot chocolate. If you have massive database tables or you have a few columns that are gigantic, then you could definitely use that performance gain. But if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.